what I'm about to show you is my first computer, my first uh, Microsoft Windows PC, I should say. Um, I was a little late getting a computer. Uh, I'm not gonna get into why, but the end story was I graduated high school. I asked my grandfather, can I get a computer? My aunt helped, and my grandfather helped me get this computer. And I've had it, had it ever since. That was back in June of 2000. And now I'm bringing it out. Um, the last time this was used was in that video on that VHS tape, which I'll show to you now, played back on a 1989 slash 1990 Funai LC950 VHS VCR, which I'm also going to demonstrate. Okay, now that we're back, that was the very last time this computer's been on. So it should be interesting to see what happens. These bags are what I threw over it back then. Keep it clean. I used to have the boxes to all three items, the monitor and the tower, but long story, I don't have them anymore. Not really a long story, but you know, I don't wanna get into that either. And there it is. I would say this is probably like the last of the good gateways before they turn to crap budget machines. Um, meanwhile, this is a budget machine because it was it's an entry level Intel Celeron 500 megahertz designed for Microsoft Windows 98, the essential little dude. in the back. Um, it did not come with an external fan right here. I added that. On the front, it does have a Philips uh, CD burner, and that made a lot of heat. And the fan and the power supply just wasn't cutting it. However, this is one of those fans from CompUSA, mind you, and that was still a thing, that um, has a thermocouple on it. Let me rephrase that. Little dude. It has a thermistor on it that'll adjust the fan speed according to temperature load. Uh, so PS2 keyboard and mouse ports, two USB 1.0 in the rear only, uh, serial port, parallel port, VGA monitor port, speaker in, speaker out, microphone, and a uh, MIDI joystick input. Some things I've added to in 2002 was a tuner card with um, NTSC tuner, uh, composite input. This was just a cheap $49 card, but it has the that Brooktree, um, it's one of those Hop Hog um, video cards that has that common chipset and I can run better drivers on it and I was doing capturing that way. Down below, uh, a 10100 um, Linksys uh, Ethernet uh, card. And that was when I first got um, cable internet. And I'll actually still have the original welcome material, I'll get into that in a minute. And the original 56K dollop modem it came with. The power supply is a 90 watt, I believe. And it had an odd issue when I first got it. The fan was actually installed backwards. It was sucking in and blowing inside the PC. So I uh, reversed that myself and now it properly pulls air from the machine and blows it out. And then you have that fan there. Come around the front. I believe this is a 48X Mitsumi CDR, um, 
CD-ROM drive, still works. Philips CD burner, the very first CD ever burned was on this. And a three and a half inch floppy drive, reset button, and so forth. Next is the original monitor. Gateway EV500. Still got the original sticker on it. And this is as is. I, I did clean all this up before I put it away. That's one of those single knob and scroll jobs. Come around to the back. March of 2000. I know this isn't vintage, vintage, but it still has some qualities that are of a vintage computer. And I said this was my first one. Before I get into the box there, let's take a look at something else. And right there is my very first computer I had, a hand-me-down. Back in 1989, early 1990, I got this. A TRS-80 Model 3. But I still have that. The tape recorder we actually bought brand new at that time. But it was new old stock. Which is cool. All the original cables. Even got a replacement printer. Uh, ribbon for it. Dot matrix printer. And everything. This is where I, what I learned to type base Or what I learned to program in basic on. It does not have the floppy drives. This has the blanks. So, I had that, I learned basic on. I still have all my programs I wrote. I have them backed up, but I also have them on cassette. All the paperwork, I'll get into that in another video. Last time this computer was turned on was in 2007, and now it has those pesky reefer caps, and I don't wanna even attempt to plug it in and have it blow up on me. Not that it'll hurt anything else, but uh, a lot of smoke's gonna, gonna pour out of it. So, that's gonna need some attention first. And this was my first um, time I got high-speed internet. I was on um, dial-up for a year and a half, or two and a half years. And then once I got a good job, I started paying for my own um, broadband internet from dial-up. It was a big difference because, get this, <laughs> I think my top speed was only like in the three or four hundred K at the time. Yeah, that's how fast high speed and it was back then but compared to 56k it was lightning fast some other things i kept the original boxes for some games i've had and we may get into that later so what's in the box this has been curled up for so long i uh doesn't even want to stay flat so yeah it has the original how to set everything up poster okay mm, memory uh came with 64k who can't you say 60 64k 64 megabytes of ram was what it came with i upgraded to the motherboard max of 256 megabytes Ooh, let's see. Ah, oh, the power cord for the monitor. Yeah, I noticed everything before I put it away and it's nice and slick still. Oh yeah, so I had two of these 128 upgrade thingies. So there was that. Bought that when I first got high speed. Yes, my CompUSA gamepad <laughs> with a MIDI port. Sweet. Let's see. Oh yeah, and here I should have the original mouse pad, a CompUSA mouse pad I bought. Yeah, yeah I shopped at CompUSA a lot. And the original Gateway software binder in a plastic bag. Ooh, and some software discs. Sweet. And here is my uh, TV card I put in it. And the thing is, you use Virtual Dub and some other um, open source software and get high quality captures. 
if you see some of my original uh, VHS to digital captures, that's where this came from. Yes, this computer could do full 720 by 480, 29.97 frames per second, providing nothing else was running. Otherwise, then it would drop frames. But otherwise, it, it was able to do it. It was capable. So I have the box for that. Uh, where I lived at the time at my parents, it was in a rural area and it I needed a battery backup. So my Hanover got me this. Packaged in with the gateway. It does still work, but of course there's no battery in it. That's been long since uh, taken care of. Let's see what else is in here. Ooh, goody. Wow, this is cool. For some reason I kept all of my original um, uh, bills for the 56k uh, internet service and apparently that's I remember that now it was October 2002 was the last time I had it then I went to uh, of course um, AT&T broadband which became Comcast here Ooh, discovering word 2000 I watch that's the packing slip That's funny, if you were to buy a uh, com desktop computer now, they don't come with any, hardly any paperwork at all. I just got one myself, and it's just like that. Declaration of conformity. Let's see what other goodies are in here. End user license agreement. Hey, it still says Gateway 2000. And it still has more. I haven't been in this box in a long ass time, so. I never opened this, but looks like there's one of those AOL CDs in here, which were everywhere at that time. So much paperwork. Back then, I think right around this time, it was still a big deal to buy a computer. Yeah, this is what an entry level computer cost back then. And this is what it cost after everything else and tax and everything for an entry level computer of 500 megahertz and 64 megabytes of RAM. So, see, I know the black one is the power for computer. These are the original power cables. I kept track of all that. The original uh, RJ11 phone cords. Oh, okay, this bag has the original memory wrapped in aluminum foil and the uh, covers that go on to um, on the back for the I, I took two off so it would have been the TV card and the uh, LAN card the full manual for the monitor the monitor is actually a gold star and it was more robust than my Sony I bought two and a half years later and it's not like after I got built my new computer I stopped using this I set this up in my other room at my parents' house, and it was in use up until summer of 2007. And I actually used this, I set this up eventually as a file server before the days of YouTube. And for those of you that are Tailspin fans, the um, Plunder Lightning full movie version you see on torrent sites and stuff, that came back from 2004 from this computer. Originally, and it was not a torrent site then. It was just a thing I posted on a forum with a link to it, and people would have downloaded from this computer. And then from there, if you got a copy, it came from this computer originally back in the day. True story. So, yeah, this computer was used heavily up until summer of 2007 for other things. I had Linux on it and some other things. <laughs> 98, a thick manual for using your gateway PC. Now it had these gateway apps on it too. Did not have a DVD player as mentioned, just a CD-ROM. So that's the, for that. <coughs> I do have the original mouse, which I kept cleaned and maintained. I never did use another mouse with it. So that was that box there. 
This box has the keyboard, which actually has some considerable weight to it. Yeah, this is back when they still sold computers with decent keyboards. Let's get it out. And again, I thoroughly cleaned this before I put it away. Um, oh, it has like really nice keys. Wow. This is back when having internet controls at the top were a big deal. But yeah, I forgot about this keyboard. It actually types very nice. And last but not least, the original speakers this thing came with. Original power supply. Original speakers in their original packing material. And there's the original speakers with the original power supply. An actual linear transformer based power supply. And one last thing I kept was the original microphone. Yes, I know it's one of those cheapy mic generic microphones you could buy under so many different brand names. This one's purely generic. There's not even a name on it. <laughs> well, I guess right there. Uh, Telex. But yeah, this is the original microphone it came with too. I kind of feel like I did when I first got this thing. So now let's go ahead and get this thing set up. Okay, everything is hooked up. Interesting how they used orange and violet for the um, keyboard and mouse connectors. So, original mouse pad. Yes, I used it, but I also kept it nice and clean too. I cleaned it regularly so it looks in good shape. I know this was all clean before I put it away, so the ball mouse is good. This was the mouse pad I used for the longest time. That's a jumper. Uh, that tuner car was, again, the entry level one. It didn't have an internal um, connection for where you jump her from the tuner card to your sound card. So this would go from like line out on the tuner card into line in on your computer to get TV sound. That's what that was for. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and see what's in this binder here. Gateway Celeron 500 drivers. Operating system backup CD. System restoration CD. Microsoft uh, Works Suite. That actually came in handy. Look at all this. This is how things were done back then. After floppies, you had CD-ROM and you had DVD-ROM and now everything's download. Did not use, but I had it. It came bundled with the machine, but it wasn't pre-installed. I think I know what this last one is. Hang on. Oh yeah. Gateway CD RW software, easy CD creator. This is the software I used to burn my very first uh, CD on. And I may just go ahead and play that at the end of this video. And now the big moment. What will happen after 10 years of being dormant? That does have a scratchy pot, but it always had since it was new. And the way it's put together, there's a screw right there and you have to get the um, front grill off and I wasn't gonna risk messing it up trying to get that off. So still has a dirty pot. I don't think I was able to get the knob off. I'll try it again, but let's try this. Hit power. That sounded great. Oh yeah, that's right. It does make that sound when there's no signal. Well, so far the monitor came on. Let's see what happens. It's booting. Although the monitor, after 10 years, went to sleep a little. It's not showing on camera, but it's rather dim. <laughs> so yeah, we'll probably have to leave the monitor on for about a half hour, an hour, a few hours till it wakes back up. So it's interesting to see, after 10 years of not being powered on, what it could do. But as you can see, it still looks good. Computer started.
Вот он. I got the ceiling fan on, that probably kind of uh, droned out the sound. Well, both fans are running. You know, I didn't even look to see what the clock is doing on this. 8.44. Holy shit, the CMOS battery's still good. However, let's just see, why is that on the wrong time? What time is it? It's actually 10.15. That's how much time this thing lost in 10 years. But it's working and the monitor's waking up. <laughs> Let's do this real quick. I wanted to demonstrate this. It has one of these deals. And you can go around, let's see, where's contrast? Up all the way, brightness, default. Pin cushion. Degauss. Oh, that worked. It's under advanced option. Oh, yeah. It's on the default. Oh, 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 that's um, the scan modes. Huh, that's weird. Why is it like way up in the corner? It's interesting to see what happens when things sit like this and then you turn them on for the first time in a decade. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it's in the upper corner like that. Yeah, single button to click through all that. Nothing yellowed or anything on this. So yeah, this I when I did the video on the oh shit, the monitor snapped. <laughs> well then, I thought I heard something snap before. Um so yeah, when I had this uh on uh ten years ago, um I believe I just reinstalled Windows 98 that it came with and ran that install uh, system restore disk to bring it back. It did come with Norton Antivirus 2000 when that was a thing. Let's see what's in here. What's this? I put this on here? I don't remember that. Dirty controls. Ah, oh, this is like a full episode. This, what you're witnessing here, was recorded. One of the very first things I recorded on that tuner capture card. So that's why this is on here. This came from a VHS tape. And in fact, later we will hook up a new VCR, not new VCR, a VCR to this and demonstrate that. Mouse is very smooth. That's what happens when you keep it maintained. <gasps> oh, I remember why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we'll close out of that. Now, I gotta check my connections because this right guy is uh, not playing.
There, I just had to exercise the potentiometer a bit. As you can see, it plays uh, standard def video flawlessly. <laughs> this is a uh, full frame, 480. Um, is it be still 4? Yeah, I didn't deinterlace, so it's still 480i. Um, this, um, so everything in here is bone stock. Um, I'm trying to get my thoughts together on what I wanted to say. Found it. Oh, come on, quit doing that. This is the theme I had turned on when I first got this thing. It's kind of messed up. It's a mixture of showing it inside of a modern computer, but then there's vacuum tubes. And that's why I liked it. <laughs> so yeah, this is what my computer would have looked like when I first got it that night. And I loved it. Same monitor, same keyboard, everything 21 years ago. Cool. I'm just amazed this original CMOS battery is still good. That is weird. Man, it lost two hours of time in 10 years, but whatever. Oh, come on! I just hope it works its way out, or otherwise I have to dump the power to it. Right. Yeah, this came with the computer. It's called Phone Tools. And um, I actually used that uh, because I had my, um, well, I can show you the phone. <laughs> Why not? At the time I had this phone on there, my 1992 GE memory phone. And actually, I wonder if this thing still, um, I never changed the backup battery in this. I wonder if this will still work. Oh, no way. How is an almost 30 year old backup battery in this still working? Really? It's amazing. So I had this phone that I got in 1992 from Service Merchandise hooked up to that computer in 2000. So I was playing around with that and being able to take phone calls on the machine itself. There we go. Hmm. <laughs> A little monitor there. Yep, still got it. Yeah, this monitor is, right now, it, it woke up. It's about the same brightness and the color balance. Everything's as is when I got it 21 years ago. Nothing drifted or anything. Meanwhile, my Sony, by the time five and a half years happened, the guns were toast. I mean, I, I, it was became overly blue, even though I adjusted the green controls uh, as much as I could. It just, it, that monitor was like dead by the time that, that happened. This monitor I know was in heavy use for seven and a half years. And even after sitting all this time, it still works. And except for that little bit of arcing, I don't know what's going on in there. But we'll let it sort itself out. Well, it's the next day. And the good news is the monitor cleared itself up. I don't think it was an external arcing. I think it was internal to the CRT. Um, you know, it only got moved once from my parents' house to this house, and then it got moved out the storage and back. Uh, that was the second time there. And, you know, who knows if there was anything inside the CRT, you know, contaminant, whatever, but it, it cleared itself up and it stopped doing it. I'm gonna disassemble the optical and floppy drives and service them by cleaning 
and anything else they may require. I'm taking apart the Philips CDRW first. And the plates on top, but and it's very dusty. I have a feeling the laser lens is also very dusty. That may cause errors. So the laser lens on here was very hazy. And after taking the um, Q-tip with some alcohol to it, now it's nice and clear. So that should eliminate any problems there. Now to do some lubrication. And now to reattach that. And apparently there's some heat sink paste on these chips. I'm gonna wipe that off and put fresh stuff down. And here's the drive, all reassembled. There we go, May of 2000. Not made in China. Um, and this was actually like a $300 or $330 option for an 8X CDR, 4X CDRW, and 32X read speed. That's what this drive was capable of. Okay, inside the Mitsumi 48X CD-ROM, but you know it says 48 there, but I also can't remember if it's 40 or 48. So this is before laser lens isn't as hazed over as the one in the writer, but I see some crap on it, so we're gonna go ahead and clean that and lubricate the sled and all that. And back together, here is the nameplate information. Product of Philippines, not made in China. And last but not least, the three and a quarter floppy drive, Panasonic, made in the Philippines, not made in China. And the inside of the floppy drive prior to cleaning, which is rather nasty. Okay, it's cleaned up. Worm gear lubricated and cleaned both heads. So I think we should be good. And the floppy drive is back together. So for the first time in 21 years, this is the first time these drives have been taken apart and serviced. I believe the CD writer uh, did need service because that, that laser lens was so hazed over. I think it did have trouble reading and writing discs. So... We'll do a test on that later. Another thing I'll comment on is the thickness of this case and the materials. This mini tower has quite a bit of weight to it, but just this cover alone is heavy as hell and it's pretty thick gauge steel. Right after this, when I built my first computer in 2003, Almost all computer cases went to cheap, thin aluminum. I mean, this is built like a tank in contrast, and this is like pretty late, 2000, you know. Just an observation. Well, this drive's working again. I think that laser lens had so much haze on it. Uh, if you notice, that one, this one is like well sealed. With like a little gasket around the front. This one's actually ventilated because it makes so much heat because it's an early burner. And I know for a while, I always had trouble after, you know, once I built my second computer, I didn't really burn much discs on it, but I know I was having some issues with this. And that's all it was. A little maintenance saved the day. So I'm bringing this up to install some stuff. Just to test, but before we're done, I will burn a new CDs and the original software how exciting it was that night. And shortly thereafter learning that um, I'd be going back to analog because it just didn't sound that great. It lacked the low end bass and the highs that you can't really get with true analog. No matter how good your CD player or whatever it is. So I, apparently I don't have the keyboard installed. You gotta do it manually. Uh, 
that optical drive is working beautifully now. Many times, a lot of fixes are just so stupidly simple. When I put this away, I made sure everything was clean up and put it away, but I didn't really do anything with it, you know. <laughs> and it's just amazing. Like, when I, when I put this away 10 years ago, by then it was just an old computer. And, but the thing is, I don't like getting rid of stuff, especially certain things. So now if you put it away, I didn't expect it to be this long, but you pull it out. I gotta fix that, that's what I'm working on. Norton Antiverse installed. <laughs> and um, pull it out 10 years later, it's just a trip. I have a lot of memories with this, even though it was the shortest run of a computer I had, two and a half years of them as the main computer. Then when I got a good job, I was I built my own, and this was a secondary slash server slash whatever. So Windows 98 second edition, 255. I know one meg is shared with the video. Everything's looking good now in here. Actually, there was a setting I was supposed to change in here. faster. <laughs> I don't know why it wasn't enabled by default. In the meantime, while I'm doing some other things, so driver is now installed for this keyboard. As you can see, the sleep light is lit up. I should press volume and I should have volume control on the screen. Let's see, mute. Uh, if I hit the uh, internet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the late 90s, early 2000s multimedia keyboard. But I will say this is a quite a nice keyboard. And it does have some weight to it. Yeah, now you just get something that's so cheap and flimsy with computers nowadays. Well, I just spent time. I didn't have a long enough cable. I just made up a really long Ethernet cable. So, put it into this. 10100 here. There's a jack right on the other side of that wall, right in the middle of the wall, in the living room. And there it is, right behind the couch here. I put this in way back in 2008, if you remember that video. Which is just on the opposite wall of the TV here. I put it there just for purposes like this, in case I ever needed it. Well, there you go. And my 1964 Hoover convertible Lavender um, Endora vacuum, Agnes Moorhead vacuum. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens here. Well, that's good, we have activity lights now. Okay, and uh, I mean, I definitely have to put a newer browser on because nothing works. <laughs> of course, MSM works like this, barely. But let's just say I go to google.com. Yeah. And if I go to YouTube, it doesn't even work. There's no encryption or anything on it. I wonder if I could look myself up here. I mean, Eventually, I'll just see what browser I can put on here that still works with Windows 98 that this will work with. Yeah, yeah, turn it on. I don't care. Images. Oh, it does work.
So apparently this is the first time I've used this since then. Now I see a sea cleaner and spy bot. <laughs> oh my. Well, we're getting somewhere. Uh, first to start with, Windows 98 um, does not natively support USB mass storage, so I had to find a driver for that. Got the driver installed. Now it recognizes my thumb drive. Got on there. I uh, just want to show you something. It lights up red when it's on USB 1.1. And is it slow? One gig. And <laughs> that's how long it's taking the transfer. I, um, story behind these. Uh, I bought that in 2004 for the low, low price of $70 or so. And uh, transfers, I bought, it was expensive because I wanted to get something for fast transfer speed, but damn it, compared to today's standards, it's slow. Then a year later, I bought for the same price, a one gigabyte version, which is what this is right here. And uh, that's how things were. Those were like brand new at the time. Before, for small like Word documents, Excel stuff, you just still use floppies or CDRs or DVDRs or whatever. But in the meantime, we got things going here. Yeah. <laughs> um. We got, I put the latest version of Firefox that is supported by Windows 98 on here. I got the latest version of VLC that's supported, but I got to download something else to make it work. I do have CCleaner on here and it, the latest version will work with 98 and it does work. I just ran it. All right, it's been a little while. So I'm gonna wrap this video up today. Uh, this was the floppy disk install for my original dial-up service, Hickory Telephone Company. Uh, it was local, independent, you know, type of thing. Everything still works beautifully. If I can push it in, that is. And we'll go to floppy A. is what's the date on this 5900 that was about one month before I got my internet service I remember that Oh yeah, this is what I was using. <laughs> I remember now. In fact, I still have my original dial-up modem sound. This is the exact recording I made. <laughs> My modem did not have a speaker on the car itself. It actually just output it through the speakers. So unless I muted it, I would hear that every time, but I had no problem with it. Also, the date on that 
August 8th, 2002 is when I recorded it. Basically, these two folders have like all the original uh, file name or files, audio clips I may have recorded. And one time, I remember one time, my bias got reset and I didn't notice it and messed up all my dates. They all say 1 1 1990, which isn't true, but unfortunately, let me see if it doesn't have like the date. Uh, it does have the modified, it does have the date created though. Nope, it just says that crap. Oh, okay. I don't remember making this one, but this is me, and I'm assuming this had to have been back in 2000, so 21 years ago. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to where we go where no one has gone before. Okay. <laughs> I don't quite remember making that one. Oh yeah, I don't know how long this lasted on the old uh, on the old Cartoon Network, but see if you guys remember this one. <laughs> Yeah. And this was before Adult Swim. This was just a normal commercial. <laughs> oh my God. My aunt uh, had a computer that was from 1999, but it was a 500 megahertz uh, Pentium 3. And uh, this was the startup sound for her Windows 98, and I captured it. <laughs> If you had good stereo headphones or it's pretty good stereo separation. That sound clip was also used in the video of Emerson Collie destroys a cheap box fan in the driveway. Uh, if you remember the beginning, I took that sound clip there for that. Oh, yeah, this will bring back some memories here. some other oddities. <laughs> and for Harley. Okay, that was from 2003. What's this one? Oh yeah, Emerson and everyone else who's familiar with this. <laughs> Me, 1994. I'm not going to elaborate what happened. Delicious. Mmm, <laughs> Star Runner. Let's see, here's some of my other classics I've made. Do the whole thing. Do the whole thing. Little wind joke at my uh, first job. Do the Hoffman. Oh, there's Elick, but that's not the right file. Uh, let's see. Some of these go up as late as 2008 in this folder, so it's pretty uh, late. Um, <laughs> Let's see what else we have. Uh, anyone here remember Stick Death? This is Spark and War. You fucking sneaky bastard. <laughs> I took all the sound clips there. What the hell's this? Oh, uh, uh, no, 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 we're not going there. Yeah, there's just so many weird things in here. <laughs> uh, 
And back when AOL Instant Messenger was the thing to have, I had my um, message sounds come through as this. That was so pleasant sounding. So some other things from back in the day. Oh yeah, here's the HTC shortcut that disc put on there. We also had, this is my copy of WinZip. Remember that screen there? It's for Windows had a uh, utility for that. We have that old real player thing there. <laughs> 56K modem. this way back in 2002 and I've been using it ever since I believe this is the latest copy that'll run on Windows oh no this is the copy I originally purchased for that I kept using the trial version even though this computer I mean everything's really responsive though even though it's only 500 megahertz I was working on something for later in this video. And there's one thing on here I gotta edit. Yep, still got it. There's one thing I do remember though. It does take a while to process some things for just one song. Just doing an equalizer adjustment here. Newer computer, it's like, zoop, done. <laughs> but hey, this is what I used to use and it, it did it. So we have Winamp on here now. Winamp. Winamp. It really whips the llama's ass. Winamp. Winamp. It really whips the llama's ass. <laughs> yeah, they were pushing the shit out of AOL back then on like everything he installed. Special shout out and thanks to Liz and Maddie, our superstar producer. 